Hey guys and gals, Malkuth 1974 back at you with another tutorial. This time we're going to learn how to do rescue Kerbal contracts. And the reason I'm doing a particular rescue Kerbal contract is because I want to teach you how to rendezvous with other vessels in orbit. And if you're playing the campaign game, this is most likely the first thing you're going to need to learn to actually start making money off of these contracts. Now, I do highly suggest, now they, they do have different difficulty levels to these, uh, to these missions, and the one we have chosen is an easy one. It, it oh, is the only way you can really tell is if you go to tracking station and you find out where the actual vessel is. In this case, uh, Collar's Hulk is basically on an 80,000 meter pro-grade orbit of Kerbin. Now you can get other rescue missions that are very similar to say this type of system right here where you see this red line this is another contract it's not a rescue Kerbin contract but it's a it's a contract you can get them like this these are a lot more difficult to get to and it takes a lot more fuel than what you might already have or they might be similar to like this where they're just a little bit farther out but you know they're on an inclination those are a little bit more uh, difficult and they take a little bit more time so when you're first starting out the best idea is to learn how to rendezvous with something that is in a very simple orbit like this and is uh, on a prograde orbit meaning he's going at that night the same way that we usually go to orbit sometimes they might be going the opposite way that's called a retrograde orbit and that is probably a little bit more difficult to get to because you're going against Kerbin when that happens but it's very similar so if you take the objectives I'm teaching you how to do in this video and apply them to more advanced stuff later on you know you can still learn on your own and you can you can have fun doing these contracts. One of the good things about Kerbal rescue contracts, especially in the campaign game, is that Kerbals now cost money in version 1.0, and uh, it's it's usually a good idea to uh, do something similar to this. So what I'm going to do in this particular version is I really don't even need this, but if you want to add extra tanks just to give you a little bit more. Uh, room that's fine I'm gonna pull these off I don't need these right now I'm just gonna go with this version of my vessel let me do this over here there we go do X that'll hold us in now let me go over something I'm gonna do so this is a rescue Kerbal contract you might see I have a one-man pod how am I gonna rescue a Kerbal with a one-man pod let me fix the staging here simple I'm gonna pull him out He's already out. There's no Kerbal in there. How is this going to fly? Well, if we look down to this little tivet here, I have one of the service bay modules. You can get those in your utility as long as they're uh, researched. And the service bay, is, this one's the 1.25. It's the only one I got in my, my tutorial game that I'm using to use all my tutorial games. And I've just placed it there. If I open it up, you'll see it's got some tidbits in it. What it actually has in it, is one of these probobond probobondine whatever the hell it is anyways it's got one of the automated probes stuck inside it with a few batteries on it and then i added these solar power panels for we don't run out of power while trying to rescue this guy that's our vessel no kerbals in it our rescue guy will be able to get inside it and we should be able to go from there just make sure your staging is all set you have your thrust set to what you want. In this case, I added a little bit more extra weight to this, so I have my thrust set to 100, and we should be good to go. So let's get into orbit. Now, since this is a very simple way of... Uh, this is a very simple mission because he is, again, only at 80,000 uh, meters, and it's not very difficult to do this. We can just do a regular launch profile and get to him. Now a few things I could teach you about how to intercept the vessel. So the basic premise is that we're going to want to launch when he's right around this area. When his vessel is right about here we're going to want to launch. By the time we get into our 80,000 uh, meter orbit we should be very close to him or we should be uh, 
he should be a little bit ahead of us, or maybe we'll we'll get the interception right on the off the bat. Sometimes it matters what how you launch and all that. Had to time accelerate first. I'm gonna wait until his vessel is probably right about here. I would say at the tip of this. My vessel is located right here, the rescue craft. That is the Kerbal Space Center. And so here we go. There he is. Now I'm gonna launch. I'm gonna do a the typical launch that we always do when launching to space. Straight up, I'm gonna hit 100 ms, do start my gravity turn, and then get up to 80,000 meters. Or close to 80,000 meters, it matters how close we get to him. Alright, so we're going to notice I stopped right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually target him. I'm going to left click on his collar's hulk, or whatever it's called in your game, and I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to look at some markers. Now, uh, there's two markers that show up when we're doing this. The first one is the target position when we actually get at our closest interception. And the second one is where we'll be. So at this point, we're going to be ahead of him. So, I'm going to go up above him a little bit and I'll teach you a little bit more about what this means once I actually get this a little bit more set so now we actually have two more uh, markers that have shown up this is the first intercept at the closest and this is the second one in the same orbit and I'm gonna make these two meet up very simply by just going like that so now they're close now I have a 4.7 kilometer intercept of this vessel so how does this work well let's look at his orbit his orbit is at 80,000 uh, meters I'm at 71,000 meters on this intercept I came ahead of him so that means that he's behind me I don't want to be going faster than him it's like real life if you're going faster than the guy behind you He's never going to catch up to you. You want to be going slower. Uh, your orbits determine your speed, and it, it's, it's the same thing on all bodies. No matter what orbit you are, you're at the same speed. So the lower your orbit to a particular body, the faster you'll be going. The higher the orbit, the slower you'll be going. So in this case, he's at 80,000. I want him to catch up to me, so I want to be above him, meaning my orbit is higher than his which he will be able to catch up to me at this point it'll be right here since we launched you know at a pretty good point when he was right here and I was just waiting for him to show up there we got an intercept pretty quick there'll be other times when you might you might you know he might be over here and you are here and you have to choose where how you're gonna catch up to him you can either uh, lower your orbit to go faster than him or you can go you can raise your orbit which is usually the quicker way by the way and have him catch up to you so that is how that works if you want to rendezvous with somebody you want to either be going you either want him to catch up to you by going slower meaning you have a higher orbit than him or you want to catch up to him by having a faster speed which requires you to have a lower orbit than him so at this point normally we would do a a, a thing right here where we we actually straight we actually get into an orbit I'm gonna actually wait and while I'm gonna wait this is a little bit more advanced you guys can do it here if you want but then you're gonna mess this whole situation up we need to go over uh, a little bit of the target reticles here so as you can see the the uh, prograde markers there I mean the retrograde markers there and this is the prograde marker you will see this little pink line here that is the target going towards you and that other pink line is a target going away from you what we want to click on what we want to concentrate right now is that we want to concentrate on the retrograde marker what we want to do if we can look at our target right now the target speed is at five 532.6 ms which is cool we want to match our target speed so I'm gonna wait until just about getting to uh, the same point as him which is right here this is what these lines are telling you and I'm gonna I'm gonna match his speed I'm gonna get his speed to zero and my speed to zero 
That way we're on a, a an easier course of getting close to him. So I'm just going to wait until this gets there. Maybe do a little too Don't do too much time acceleration because you don't want to go by it. It's very important you do not go by this because then we're going to fall out of orbit and we don't want to fall out of orbit. So there we go. Now I'm going to speed up. I'm going to put my throttle all the way up and I'm just going to keep my reticle on this retrograde marker. It's going to move a little bit. That is fine. We are looking for a target speed of zero. And what this is going to do is going to put us in the same basic orbit as what the target is in. And there we go. I'm going to kind of just follow it a little bit and get it to zero. There, that's actually close enough. So now if we look at our orbit, we can see that we're basically in the same orbit as him. And it's showing us right now that our next closest intercept of him on the same orbit is going to be down here and we're going to be separated by about 46.7 kilometers. Well that's bad because we're already close enough to him. If we go to the target, if I point my retrograde, my, uh, my reticle on the target, which is the little circle, that's the, that's the forward facing target, you can see he's right there. He's five kilometers away. If I go like this, that means I am facing away. So that's why I'm saying forward or back. So if looking at this way, I'm facing away from the target. Looking this way, I am actually facing the target. And then our retrograde marker is right there. And our prograde marker is right there. All these are important aspects of doing an interception. So what I'm going to do, I want to get closer to this guy. So I'm going to put my reticle on the forward facing target marker and I'm going to intercept. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to go to about 38 ms. Any speed will actually work. It doesn't matter. But what I do want to show you is I want to show you how a little bit of this works. Now imagine that right now the target marker I hope I'm not going to make this too complicated, but the target marker is my current heading towards the vessel. The the prograde marker is the target vessel. So right now, if I don't do anything, you can see he's drifting away a little bit. I'm going to go past him by quite a bit. So if I want to make sure that I want to make sure that this circle is inside this circle when intercepting. So the way to do that is to burn the opposite direction that the circle is on this circle. So in this case, he's right here. I want to burn right here. And what will happen is he'll move over and my intercept will actually go closer to him. I did gain some speed on that. That is fine. If we're looking at where he is, he's at 2.3 kilometers. We're, we're gaining very, very quick. So now I'm going to go to the retrograde. Now the retrograde is what we use to slow us down and to match his target speed. Right now I'm going a lot faster than him. And the same rules apply. If we're looking at this from this point of view, I'm heading towards him now backwards. And he is, uh, the, that's uh, the target reticle and that's him. What I want to do is actually slow down a little bit, but I want those to match up just a tad and I want to slow down just a little bit more because he's getting closer he's getting closer and I want again to just get these two circles and the, that little uh, marker there so you can see he's 105 away he's still a little bit close I'm gonna get a little bit closer there we go make sure that circles right there anytime you burn retrograde while you are targeting you'll match his target speed he's right there you can actually see his vessel actually a little bit right there what is he in I don't know let's get a little bit closer whoops he's there I can go back to the uh, target facing him and I can sorta of give myself just a tad of speed I kinda want him right there don't want to hit him though so I'm gonna slow down there we go we are right on top of him now so there he is and that's how you intercept 
another target. He's actually in a uh, plane cockpit. So I should be able to switch to him now. There we go. I should be able to EVA him. EVA. Should be able to take him off. Put my backpack on and send him to my pod. Again, this is a one-man pod. I put the automation into it for I can do this exact thing. I can save him from that pod. And now I'm going to push B to board. And now we actually have Collar Kerman in our thing. If we go to the complex, the, the contracts completed, rescue Agaber Kerman from orbit of Kerman. Of Kerman. Uh, well done. All that stuff. Yep, everything's done. And now he's part of our space program crew. And that is up there. That is fine. That is the end of the video. So that is how you rescue a Kerbal. Just remember these key points in uh, the game. Your orbits determine your speed. If you're if you need if he's behind you when you're trying to intercept him, you want to be going slower. If he's ahead of you, you want to be going faster. Certain circumstances will dictate what you need to do. You might actually have a situation where you're on the moon trying to intercept something that is at a very low orbit and you might not be able to go below his orbit because you'll either crash into mountains or if you're, you know, at Kerbin and you're at 70,000 meters, you don't want to go below 70,000 meters because then you'll be in the atmosphere and you'll burn up or you'll uh, lose everything. So just something to remember that usually the best way to intercept somebody that's far away from you is to be going slower than him. You have a lot more control over uh, the orbits and stuff like that. You will have to mess around with it to figure out how to do things. Adding inclination to things makes things a little bit more difficult. But I'm sure you guys can, you get the picture now that you understand the basics of it. Adding inclination to it just adds another step to the process. And just think of everything as in steps. Every time they add something to challenge you with distance or inclination or another planet, they're just adding more steps to you actually getting there. And that's how Kerbal Space Program works. You just, you just keep working on it until you get all the steps complete. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. This is Malkuth, 1974. You guys have a great day. Great flying. Go rescue those Kerbals, will you? This is Malkuth. Out of here.